Hello everyone and welcome back to Uncomplication. I have a video for you today about fundamental analysis. A couple of videos ago I was making the comment that uh, as the market moves sideways and might even be in a downtrend, that having a good grasp of the fundamentals behind the projects that you're uh, invested in is just as important as looking at the technicals. And so today um, I have a video that uh, is a little on the long side. I'm trying to keep these short, but I just blab. So I hope I hope you can get past that. But I think there's some good content here. I think that it um, shows how, the, the lens uh, through which to see this market, not just as a soup bowl of these three and four letter acronyms that uh, you know, are just about going up in value and, you know, 10xing, 100xing, and that's what we're looking for, but actually treating this space like a, a sector of technology where there's a lot of early stage companies that have huge potential. It's like investing in early Amazon in, in some cases. And so moving from that uh, lens of just kind of the market player into a technology investor in this space, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. So uh, I hope that this is useful. I hope you enjoy. Uh, yeah, let's get to the good stuff. Cheers. I am sitting here looking at one of my favorite uh, market visualizations, CryptoBubbles.net, and I have this set to show me uh, the different cryptos in the space uh, by their market cap. So the size of these bubbles actually shows the amount of money that is in that project, uh, the market cap of that project, and we can see what we already know uh, that Bitcoin is the biggest project uh, by a lot. It is over two times the size of Ethereum, the next closest. And we've got uh, these other projects, BNB and ADA and Doge and XRP as kind of satellites around uh, Bitcoin. And as we look in the background here, we can see a lot of these um, smaller projects. Here's Zill and uh, FTT, Rune, Hot, Theta. Uh, but to me, this is like visualizing the crypto solar system. And we can intuit some things just by this picture alone. The smaller the uh, market cap of these projects, the more they are affected by the gravity of Bitcoin and the more they are prone to um, large percentage moves up or down. So if I am an investor and I am, or even a trader, and I'm hearing people talk about these different projects, if I'm just thinking them, thinking of them in terms of the you know, letters, ADA, ADA, like do I wanna buy ADA or BNB? I mean, I'm just comparing uh, the names of these things without having a, a concept of how big they are relative to the other uh, cryptos in the space. And I don't have a sense of where the value is actually coming from, what people are exchanging their dollars for when they buy an ADA or a, a NEO or Telcoin. So what I'm gonna talk about today is what I was mentioning in the last video, that when the market is in a downtrend or going sideways, and we've just had what everyone was calling an alt season and people were filling their bags with these uh, medium and low capped coins, having an understanding of what those projects are and where they derive their value is really important if you are trying to figure out whether to hold on or sell or to buy. And so none of this is financial advice. I will never give you financial advice on this channel or, or give you recommendations on what to buy or what to sell or anything like that. This is purely educational and um, entertainment. Uh, but I want to look at the crypto market with you and do a little bit of fundamental analysis, show you how I think about these projects, because I do think it is helpful um, to kind of separate ourselves from just what we see on uh, Coinbase as, you know, this thing moved up 20% today. Do I want to throw 10 grand at it? Uh, fundamental analysis is going to allow us to understand what these things actually are and if we want to exchange our value for them. And I was thinking about an analogy for this and um, you know, fundamental analysis is not unique to crypto. It's a, a, a due diligence that people do when they're trying to create a valuation for a business or a stock. And so I think we can think in terms of analogy, let's say someone was going to sell you a restaurant or even shares in that restaurant. Um, chances are you wouldn't just say, okay, I like restaurants, here's my money you would want to do some due diligence. You'd want to know 
where is this restaurant located? What kind of food does it serve? Has it been successful in the past? How many clients come back? Uh, what's the kitchen like? Does it have a good chef? There'd be a whole checklist of things that we would want to look at before we'd say, okay, this is a cool restaurant. I want to own a piece of it. Because, I mean, there are millions of restaurants and they're not all created equal. And similarly, we have a market full of thousands of these tokens and they are not created equally. So let's actually dive in. Let's look at a couple projects, um, kind of picking them at random. So nothing that I'm looking at is a recommendation or um, a, a promotion or a detraction. I just want to apply this um, lens of, tech, of um, fundamental analysis to some of these projects. So I'm going to go here to my mind node, which I love to just kind of map out my thinking. And this is pretty comprehensive. If you're actually doing a full fundamental analysis of a project, it can go many layers deep. Um, I also have what I'll share towards the end of the video, the, you know, for normal people, uh, what I feel is an adequate, um, a, a, a decent look into a project that isn't a full exhaustive, like, uh, you know, audit which is what I kind of have spelled out here. But I do want to run through some of these concepts and kind of look at examples just so you understand what they actually mean. And if you're getting more and more into crypto or you're even holding on to some things and you're not sure what you bought or if it's something you want to keep or, or sell or whatever, uh, this I think is a good exercise to um, at least understand even if you don't go all the way through it. So why do we do fundamental analysis? It's so we can understand where that asset gets its value. Um, maybe someone on Twitter said, hey, this thing is amazing, it's blowing up and you bought it, but where does that value actually come from? Is it just because somebody said that it's valuable? Uh, that will help us reach a conclusion on whether that asset is undervalued or overvalued. And that will help us understand whether we want to, um, you know, if and when we want to enter or exit uh, positions. So let's actually walk through this process and let's pick some coins truly at random. I'm going to hop over to CoinGecko. Um, it's just one of the index sites that I like. Um, it ranks these projects, these different coins by market cap right now. So we can actually see uh, the largest. And as we go from the top 10, which are really uh, safe bets, these are um, big projects. They move slowly. Uh, they've got a lot of gravity. Let's uh, apply this lens of fundamental analysis to something a little bit deeper, uh, not even on the first page, not even in the top 100. Let's just go to page five and let's find something at random. Um, again, I'm not promoting any of these. I'm not trying to promote or detract. I am literally just trying to find something to uh, analyze. So my cursor just landed on plat platin coin, platon coin. Um, let's take a look. So here we are on CoinGecko. And the great thing about these types of sites is they aggregate a lot of data for us right up front and they give us um, some links as a drop uh, as a jumping off point. So uh, first of all, you know, the market cap of this coin, this is number four, four, four. So um, if that's your lucky number, then throw all your money at it. No, don't do that. Um, so number four, four, four by market cap. We can see the market cap is at uh, $40 million. Trading volume is, is relatively low, uh, $280,000 um, in the last 24 hours. So that already is kind of an indication of not a lot of volume uh, relative to the market cap. We can see that there is a max supply of three or 300 million coins. Um, but I also see that the circulating supply, um, there's only 81 million coins released. So that to me is uh, not a red flag, but it is a question. I, I really would like to know where are the rest of the uh, max supply coins? What is the actual mechanism for those being released? Uh, can the developer of this coin just decide when they want to create more and they can airdrop them or send them to people? Uh, is there mining involved? Uh, so some of these kind of tokenomics things are um, clues for deeper investigation. Uh, if I actually jump over here to my um, spreadsheet and kind of go through this, you know, I'm looking right now at these financial metrics. So let's just move this up because this is pretty easy to just get from a platform like this. So, you know, what is the market capitalization? Um, 
and, and we see that it's pretty low and without knowing what this coin's purpose is, again, those fundamentals, uh, I don't really have a sense yet of what the growth potential is. It's sitting at 40 million, but um, is this a project that's trying to uh, take some market share from a non-crypto project uh, and this market cap could actually grow. Um, a great example is Bitcoin. So it has a market cap right now of around $600 billion, um, but it is trying to vie for the market cap of gold. It wants to be a global investment asset. And so the market cap of gold shows the growth potential in the Bitcoin market cap and shows that kind of narr narrative of um, Bitcoin over time, taking more of that market cap and growing as a project. Right now, just looking at Platon coin, uh, Platon coin, uh, I don't know yet whether this market cap has room to grow. So uh, we looked at some of these things. Uh, I haven't found the supply mechanisms yet. We'll look at that. Liquidity and volume, like I said, it looks pretty low as far as just the trading volume. But um, so let's let's go past these financial metrics. Let's look at the project metrics. I think this is more interesting. Again, like we're going to buy a restaurant. Who's the chef? So let's stay. Let's start here and let's actually go to the website of this project and let's uh, use our, our eyes and ears and gut uh, to kind of tell us what we what we think. So right off the bat, you know, it looks nice. It looks like uh, they've actually put some time into uh, creating a presence for this. Um, this is where, I mean, if you're considering investing in this, you know, watch the video. If I can create an account, create an account. Um, you know, what what are they actually trying to do here? Uh, Platin Life is a complex digital ecosystem combining different features and tools to begin using the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Choose your desired membership plan. So, I mean, right off the bat, they've told me nothing. Is a complex digital ecosystem dividing, combining different features. Um, you know, I'm already kind of like suspect because if I were coming and, um, you know, wanting to use a tool like this, uh, having that value proposition right up front of what they're actually trying to do is a lot more important to me than just buying a membership into something that I don't understand. So, um, you know, with any one of these projects, I'm not going to be able to do this in a quick YouTube video, but um, if someone was telling you about this, you were thinking about investing, uh, as deep as you can go into this site and actually understand what this platform is, uh, you can think about it not so much like a crypto as you can think about it like an app or a, a business. Uh, do you want to back this business? Do you want to hold that token? Um, is it going to grow over time? So it's showing me the exchanges it's on. Um, it's showing me the partners. That's a little bit more important. I mean, what does it actually mean that they're partners with Microsoft? I think we need to dig a little bit deeper here. But the things that we can typically find on these pages are, um, you know, so here's the white paper. So any good project is going to have a synopsis of what the project actually intends to do and description of the situation and problem. So read the white paper, um, do your due diligence, uh, be critical, be harsh in your uh, investigation and your evaluation of whether this is something that uh, we really think is a problem that this team, this project is uniquely going to be able to solve. Yeah, so I mean, this white paper kind of looks like a PowerPoint. Um, and, and to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to detract and I know that there's people behind this, they're working hard, but I'll just kind of say in my first critique, uh, I still, you know, after scanning through these pages, I still have no idea what they're actually doing, what their what their platform is trying to do. A lot of what I've been reading is just, you know, kind of the the main tenets of blockchain, but they're not telling me what they are doing differently that is going to um, set them apart or or help them go from market cap number four 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 to uh, higher up. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let's let's hop back. Let's go back and um, again. You know we're we're always comparing. So let's go to page two. So this is not the top hundred. This is the top two hundred. Let's just find another one here. I'm gonna try and find something that I actually have heard of, but something that I haven't um, invested in. Let's do scale. Okay. So this is ranked number one fifty four. Um, it's got a market cap of two hundred and sixty two million trading volume in the last 24 hours, uh, 15 million. Uh, they do have a max supply. The circulating supply is a little confusing to me because it 
is at uh, 4 billion and we've only got uh, 1.2 billion that's actually circulating. So again, this is where I wanna know where are the other tokens? How are they going to be deployed? Um, but let's take a look at their website. Let's see if they do a better job of explaining what their project is. Elastic Blockchain Network. Build powerful Ethereum dApps. Run your dApps in a decentralized modular cloud built for real world needs and configured for your requirements. Deploy with just a few lines of code. So already I understand this a lot more. These guys are helping people build dApps, decentralized applications. It looks like a developer platform so I can actually see the code and I can start um, developing my dApp on the scale platform. Um, they're, they're talking to a particular demographic in this, you know, forget the limitations of traditional blockchain development. Scale Network's modular protocol is one of the first of its kind to allow developers to easily provision highly configurable blockchains. So um, already, you know, as a, as a person who spent time in um, internet technologies, I'm understanding that these guys are uh, trying to build tools for people that build dApps. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the, the presentation. Let's see if we can find a little bit more about the team. So uh, here's partners. This is always something that you want to see. Uh, you know, just because they have a logo doesn't necessarily tell you like how deep that partnership is or what they're actually doing with those partners. But um, clearly, they have uh, been in the market. They've got some um, cross pollination with other projects. So let's see here. Okay, beautiful. So about they've got team, and I want to know you know who is building the scale network. That's what I want to know. So it's an open source Web3 platform intended to bring speed and configurability to blockchain. So we've got um, Stan Clado, PhD. There's Jack O'Helleron, <laughs> uh, the CEO. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, there is a team of people behind this. They're putting their faces uh, proudly on the internet. They've got engineers, they've got marketing, they've got kind of a whole little company here. And uh, for these people, you know, here's the CEO, uh, CTO. So, I mean, this is this is the kind of stuff that I like to see. I like to be able to go in, know these people are real, uh, know that they care about this project and that they're the type of team that's going to continue developing regardless of what the market is doing. Uh, the other thing that I had, you know, these guys clearly understand how people do uh, fundamental analysis. On my um, mind node, you know, the next part here was the white paper. And so they've got right up front and center, here's their white paper. And so we can spend some time here taking a look. I mean, you can already see compared to the last one that we saw, not to you know promote or detract anyone, but um, this is a lot more of a uh, scientific uh, publication. And we've got, um, yeah, we've got some, some meat to kind of chew on here. So the other things that I like to know about, um, you know, the roadmap, what is their actual development timeline? How are they evolving their product? Uh, social activity, uh, if I come back here to CoinGecko and I follow them on uh, Twitter, uh, are they active? They've got 27,000 followers. Um, they're actively tweeting. It looks like they're, um, you know, they're having meetups in the space or, or hosting meetups. So I can see that this is a, a thriving little community that's all focused on this project. Those are the types of things that just build confidence in this being um, a business as much as just a, a tradable token. Um, so, uh, competitors, so this is an important thing to keep in mind. I think right now there are a lot of projects that are trying to do similar things, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem where there are known challenges with the Ethereum blockchain and a lot of different groups are building uh, layer two technologies and side chains and these development platforms. So I'm sure there's probably, if I, if I search, I can probably find uh, scale and some of its competitors and just understand what is the long-term prospects in this space. Is Ethereum 2.0 going to uh, negate the need for a lot of these tools? I don't know. Um, but those types of uh, investigations I think are important to just understand the risks. Uh, what are the risks that are facing um, this project? And if I'm looking at um, you know investing in it, uh, those are good things to know. Uh, On-chain metrics, I won't spend too much time on, but with a lot of these projects, you can learn quite a bit about the activity and the security and just the, the use of the, um, the, the, the tools and the tokens themselves. So um, we could probably cover that in another video. 
But, um, you know, okay, so what, right? So what? We've looked at scale. Um, you know, it's a great example of what is clearly a real project backed by real people doing real things in the world. Uh, the question comes back to me, uh, do I care? Is this something that I cannot wait to invest my money in? Uh, is this something that I am seeing as a long-term uh, holding or something that I would want to you know, keep or, or continue to buy even if there is a bear market uh, scenario? And remember, the, the whole reason why we do these um, uh, fundamental analyses is to decide whether we want to enter or exit positions. So one of the things that I feel is that based on this very, very short analysis of scale, um, there's value. I, I, I can see the value. I can see that um, this is something that is serving a need. And you know, this is a quick video. I would actually go a lot deeper. I'd try and find what are the dApps that are actually being built on scale? What are people saying? Why would they leave scale for another platform? But let's just say we've done the analysis. We really see the value. Um, the question is, you know, is this undervalued or overvalued right now? And so that's where we actually bring in some more technical analysis. We look at uh, historically uh, what has scale done in the past? Where are we now uh, in relative price? And is this a good time to buy scale? Because uh, I think the way that this market works is that if you are able to identify these good technologies with good teams and you're able to acquire them when they are undervalued, because we keep going through these cycles of overvalued, undervalued, uh, if you can buy and hold on to those, um, those stocks, those, those uh, tokens, when they're undervalued, then that's where the um, fundamentals will buoy them up uh, the next time there is a markup phase in the market and you will be holding things that are in inherently valuable and can be swinging into that overvalued stage and we were able to actually scoop them up when they were uh, at a discount. Okay, so now as promised, let's talk about fundamental analysis for quote, normal people. Uh, people that don't necessarily have the time or interest to do deep dive due diligence for every uh, coin that they are thinking about acquiring. Um, I will say that if you are in this market and you did uh, just go through the alt season where you might have picked up some things that you're not really clear on what they are, um, the first thing that a normal person in this market should do is get a sense of, of what kind of crypto -er you are or plan to be. So if you are just a hodler and you are buying Bitcoin and putting it under the mattress, waiting for it to appreciate in three or four years, then fundamental analysis is less important. Um, following some of the news or just being aware of what's happening, happening in the crypto space is probably enough. But if you stick to those top five projects, top 10 projects even, um, that's a place where you don't have to do a whole lot of fundamental analysis because those um, those projects are, are highly vetted. Um, that's not to say they're guaranteed to go up in value, but uh, the need to do due diligence as a hodler is um, lower. If you are a trader and you are getting into this market because you are trying to um, scalp trade or swing trade or just uh, you're really just looking at the technicals and you're just trying to buy buy here and sell it to someone else when the price goes higher. That's also where fundamental analysis is less important. Um, the only reason why it might be important is to identify things that might be about to uh, grow. But if you're purely trading, the fundamentals are not as, um, as important. If you are, however, an investor and you have... Uh, value in your life, uh, money that you've earned that's sitting in a bank account and you want to actually invest that in, in projects that are likely to be uh, in their early stages and will have these big bright futures, this is where technical analysis, or I'm sorry, fundamental analysis is really valuable. And so if you don't know what kind of trader you are, that's or what kind of crypto -er you are, a trader, a hodler, or an investor, that's a good place to really pause and reflect and think about what you want to get out of this. And um, if you are just trying to make a quick buck in trading, that's great. You can turn me off. Uh, if you are looking to invest, however, this is where um, fundamental analysis is useful. So if you don't take the time to do fundamental analysis, you can't get mad if you lose your money. Uh, if you are buying things just based on what someone on Twitter is saying or you know some YouTube video that said it's going to 100x and you don't take the time to research the project and then it dumps, 
you really can't get mad at anyone but yourself. So that's another reason to to take this fundamental analysis seriously, because in this in this space, anyone can make a coin, anyone can fork a project and just clone an existing project, give it a fancy name, a fancy website, do a bunch of promotion on YouTube and Twitter and crank up that price and then just, you know, do a rug pull and leave the um, the uninformed investor uh, holding the bag. So take the time, do the fundamental fundamental analysis if these are things that you're actually uh, wanting to hold. And in the beginning, I kind of talked about that restaurant analogy. I think that's really the basics for the, the normal person is, is have that critical lens that these aren't just tokens, that these represent real projects. And if we're looking for something that is going to be you know, like buying early Amazon stock. A lot of these, a lot of these cryptos are projects that are just in their infancy, but have the potential to change the world. And so, looking at the problems that they aim to solve and the utility that they bring to uh, businesses and governments and individuals uh, helps you get out of that mindset of I'm just buying this kind of funny money with these uh, three-letter acronyms. To I'm investing in this company. What problem are they trying to solve? And so take the time, go to the website of the project, dig deep, be critical, be harsh, uh, really use that critical thinking. Is this something that is needed in the world? It is meaningful beyond just the uh, tradability of it. Uh, I've seen so many projects, projects, uh, you know, tokens come out this year that, um, you know, have these huge community followings and people are really uh, evangelical about them. But when you start to peel back the layers and actually ask, well, what does this, what does this token do? Uh, who actually wants to use this in the real world, not just to buy and sell, but to actually provide some function? Um, that's the, the lens I think the normal investor should be looking through, that we're not just buying um, based on people's uh, daily or you know in the moment uh, assessment of value, but that we are um, moving our finances into these projects that are set to really do things in the world. And um, actually, if you want to head over to the Crypto Garden channel, that's the other channel that I'm a part of uh, with the Crypto Garden community. Also on YouTube, you can go subscribe there. We just did a, an interview with uh, one of our gardeners who was talking all about Hedera Hashgraph which I actually did not know um, a whole lot about, but that's a great example of a, a real utility uh, token that is um, you know, forming partnerships. I'm not just trying to promote uh, Hedera or say go buy it, but if you watch that interview and, and you hear um, Dogbite, the individual, talking about how he came to you know, analyze from the thousands of coins uh, you know, eight to 10,000 coins down to, you know, the top five he was interested in and then really became an advocate and a fan of, of Hedera, uh, you can see that thought process working and you can see the difference between a, you know, highly promoted kind of uh, ravenous fan base uh, token that's just about, you know, 10x and growth and yada yada versus something that's not really marketed very much, but is you know, building partnerships with global global organizations and is already uh, live with applications that provide value to companies. Um, that's the lens that I'm really encouraging you to start looking through is these things, um, you know, what's the problem that they're trying to solve? What's the real utility of the, the project? And is there a team that is uh, the, the team that's going to do it, that's gonna be able to follow through and execute? So go to the websites, find the team page, find their roadmap, see how they've uh, delivered on past uh, promises on that roadmap. Uh, what are the basic metrics of the token? Is it being used? Um, you know, what's the what's the actual, not just the trading volume, but um, you know, what is the community look like that is um, you know staking or using or uh, contributing to the the computing power of the network. Um, and if there's a community around one of these projects that you're interested in, join it. Uh, most of them have uh, active Twitters, they've got Telegram groups and uh, Discords that you can join. You can get really deep into um, even just one or two projects and become uh, educated and excited and a, and a fan for them. And that's, um, I think, a great place to be in this space where it's not just I'm on Coinbase, I'm looking for things that are popping off and I'm just gonna go scoop up 
you know, the next three letter name, but I'm actually identifying a couple that speak to me and I, I start putting investment there and I follow it and I am highly critical of that team and their promise and whether they're delivering on it. If they're delivering on their roadmap, they're delivering on the partnerships and the utility and the um, applications that are being launched and um, you know, looking for those reasons why it's not a good investment rather than just convincing myself it is. Um, you know, the other thing that I have up here as far as risk mitigation, which I think is, is a good thing to keep in mind, especially if you're new in this space, is, is thinking in terms of a, a well-rounded portfolio and um, not going all in on a project unless you do have that certainty um, that you've come to uh, through your own uh, due diligence process. Uh, the, the way that I've heard most people in this space and what I've tried to do as well is to have a portfolio that is really made up of uh, some solid investments that are, um, you know, have a good track record and then looking for these other projects that are uh, up and coming, but recognizing that when you're, when you're talking about smaller projects, there is more risk involved. So you never want to place a bet that's bigger than what you're willing to lose and that there is um, a method for identifying a handful of these uh, vetted projects that you do believe in and putting, you know, rather than putting all of your money on one, you can, uh, you know, put smaller amounts that you're willing to lose on uh, a handful. And then the, the theory is if one of them really grows and the other four don't, uh, you are able to cover the uh, lost money, kind of like a roulette table where you're not just you know, putting all your money on one square, you're actually kind of placing some bets. It's, it's a basic concept in uh, having a portfolio of investments. So um, you know, don't, don't necessarily do that willy-nilly, and this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'll say that over and over again. Um, but looking at this space and finding those projects that you do resonate with, uh, don't overextend. Um, you know, have that kind of risk mitigation strategy where you are able to place, you know, smaller bets that you're comfortable losing on a handful of projects that you really believe in that have good uh, fundamentals. And that's just a way to kind of hedge your bets and to, to round out your um, investment. So, um, yeah, I think that kind of brings me to the end here. I hope that this was valuable. I hope that it gives you a new lens to look at this market through. Uh, not just one of the carnival where you're, you know, picking names out of a bowl and just hoping that they continue to go up, but that you just take the time to go that one layer deeper, one layer deeper, uh, you know, check out the sites, check out the projects, the teams, understand what they're trying to do. And um, yeah, uh, move away from that, uh, viewing all of these projects as equal and really understanding that this is a technology space. These are technology companies. These are technology projects and we should have the same level of criticism about their potential success as we would any other uh, business or team or project. So I will leave it at that. I wish you well, and until next time, cheers.